Now, let me just wait for the stream to come up. Hmm. Hello, hello. I, on my end, it says live. It says we're okay, live. On my end, it says live too. We're good. Just give us a couple. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Right. Are things popping up on your screen now? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So hi and welcome. This is a session about the truth about mindset for a six and seven figure business. I am here with Karina Groombridge, who is a specialist in mindset that you need for scaling your business. And just to give you a little bit about who she is, if you want to grow your business, but your days are filled with clients and you're delivering and you're running around and you're serving them and it's like it's a great place to be but it can be a really stressful place to be as well trying to fit it all in and you're kind of getting into that as a coach getting into that daily grind Karina is your expert to help you out if you've got like big goals and big ambitions and business is good clients are coming in but you have nowhere to put them <laughs> it's a nice problem to have, but it can be a really challenging problem to have too. Then Karina is the person to help you. She is going to help you with your mindset and your business. So welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Offer Accelerator Live. Really good to have you here. I was having a little panic before as we were having like uh, tech issues, but great to see you we, here. But we too. made it here. We we oh, did it. We made it. We're all good. We're all good. <laughs> So I'm gonna like jump straight in and like, I always like to just get to the chase and, and ask the questions. So what do businesses, what is, the, what is the magic source? What do businesses need to do to get themselves to six and seven figures? What do, what do they do? Oh, okay. You're like jumping right to the chase. I yeah. love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like direct. I just know, I love direct. Direct it, is yeah. good. Direct is good. So I feel like, if we were to kind of boil it down to like, what is the, that key thing? And what I see the most is like, mm -hmm. just this idea of get out of your own damn way. <laughs> like mm -hmm. We're literally the ones who stand in our own way to reach and achieve the success that we actually want, mm -hmm. which is wild because like on a logical like my brain um usually operates at a very much like logic based like black and white yeah. uh, at least it did before and logically nobody would be like oh yes totally i'm like sabotaging myself we mm -hmm. don't think like that mm -hmm. but on there's another level like kind of like this like underlying um uh subconscious beliefs that we have that mm -hmm will have us choosing the options that keep you small, that keep you playing safe. So it's like this, of course, nobody's going to logically be like, oh, like, yes, I want to stay small, limit myself, like not mm -hmm. go big and all of that. But at the same time, then we make these choices that are like, you know, yeah, like, like little baby, baby business owners and not taking up space and actually owning this is my expertise. This is what I do. This is how I can help you. And like really taking it to that next level. Mm. I, 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 I love this subject. I think it is something that um, is, is present no matter where you are going in your business, yeah. in your life. And I think it's like, we, we, like logically you need marketing strategies, you need business strategies, you need to know how to get leverage in your business, you need to know how to systemize your business and use your time, we've all got the same time. But as you say, it's like the patterns that run through your head are the things that are gonna make or break you, I guess, and hopefully make you and break you. And it's exactly. I've sort of like, yeah, I, I'm doing a challenge at the moment, which is about, you know, just showing, trying to show through some of the things and open up a bit so that you can identify the patterns that you're running. I mean, oh, you must work that. with lots of people, right? And yes. you can see it's so much easier to see the patterns from the outside. Yeah. Oh, yes. It's a piece of cake from over here. But also because you said like when you're going to scale, you know, you need the, the structure, you need the um, team, you need like all of these elements. And there's just one thing that I want to highlight is all of those things, like they're learnable skills. 
right? Mm -hmm. Like there's a million different strategies. They can all work because, you know, they've worked for different yeah. people here and there, depending on who you are, what you do, all of that. But the one thing that isn't just like, a, okay, I'm going to buy this strategy and apply it mm -hmm. is your mindset, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like that's, mm -hmm. for me, it's the one thing that like, it's tailored to you, like the limits that you are going to come up against and face are your own. And they're based on your past experience. They're based on how you grew up, like what you saw around you and, and what's happened in your life up until now. And so yeah. for you to overcome that, like one strategy might work great for somebody, but somebody else who has a very different belief system, who has a very different mm -hmm. upbringing and like mentality is going to try on this strategy and be like, why isn't it working? I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Like it's not working because you're, thinking about it very differently than this, yeah. you know, than this person who had so much success with it. Mm. I think a, a really good example of this, with something that has like run a run through my life is it, and I've trained people to do this is public speaking. Oh, and it's something yeah. that everybody relates to because they, and I think 90% of the world statistically think they'd rather, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Would rather they die. Public <laughs> and I, I, years ago realized I, I love it right and so the difference between when when someone asks me to speak on a stage compared with most of the population the the, the thoughts going through my head are how can I connect with the audience how can I deliver my message how can I really get them to take the action I want that's what I'm thinking how do wow. I perform at my best most people and I'm, I'm not sort of saying I'm awesome I'm just saying in this particular you know oh, no you can own being awesome that's okay yeah, I'm like <laughs> we like that myself again but I don't mean to um <laughs> but most people are like oh my god I've got to go up in public oh my god I've got to be on camera oh my you know so it's kind of like who is going to perform better on the stage someone who's yeah. got that process of like how do I tailor it to the audience what do they want what do they think yeah. you know, compared with someone who's going oh Panic, panic, panic. And it's the same with everything in life, right? It's the same yeah. with everything in life. It's the sequence and the patterns that are going through your head, which will dictate the actions and the, you know, the feelings that you have and the actions that you take. So Absolutely. I guess the, the kind of million dollar question or the second million dollar question is um, like, how do you know you haven't got the right mindset? And how do you shift, you know, how do you start shifting some of that so that you're kind of like, why can't I get to the next level in my business? Why can't I get to six figures, seven figures? What is holding me back? And you're kind of trying all the stuff. And as you say, so like when it comes to marketing, some things work for some people and not for others. It depends on that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, so how do you recognize it, first of all? And how do you get start shifting that stuff yeah absolutely so that's an amazing question and i mean kind of a key one in order to implement right yeah. so so for starters i am a big supporter of of getting coaching getting some kind of support like this is what i do for my clients because so often it's really hard to see it for yourself and i personally i've invested tens of thousands of dollars in my brain because I'm human. I like, even though I know so much of these principles and theories, I still get stuck. I still mm -hmm. find myself like it, hitting up against a wall. And I find when you get support, it's the fastest way to kind of see what's holding you back and then be able to tweak it. But mm -hmm. so that is my, my pitch to you. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you do not currently have some form of support in your business, go find it. Like, this mm -hmm. is what I do. There are so many amazing coaches out there. Mm -hmm. Go get yourself somebody in your corner who's advocating and like literally watching, okay, what are you doing? How are you showing up? How are you performing? And tweaking it and helping you get the best out of yourself. So that's like, <laughs> that's like one thing that's because hard. I feel like we all, all need it no matter at what level you are at. I, I support businesses that are just starting and I support businesses that are scaling past like, like to six figures and beyond. So mm. it doesn't matter where you are. Like 
we all need it to get to that next level. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. But if we kind of put that aside, and if you're sitting there um, wondering, okay, like, how am I going to see where I'm getting stuck? How am I going to going to figure out, okay, what's the bits that need to change? So what I tell my clients and really the parts that um, like, there's a lot of things, but if we really want to just hone in on one thing, what is pissing you off in your business? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like it, (laughs) <laughs> but like, it's actually, when you think of it like that, it's a lot easier to see, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, well, there's this thing that I've been avoiding or haven't been focusing on or just like not prioritizing. Um, I don't want to do it. I'm afraid, you know, you name it. But that piece in your business that you, that is either pissing you off or avoidance, procrastinating, whatever, this mm. is a really good opportunity to look at that and ask yourself, okay, why? Like, why am I putting it off? Why am I not going all in on this? So that mm. is an excellent place to start if you're kind of wondering, okay, where is my growth? Like, how can I go and improve and excel to the next level? Yeah. So there's there's that piece, that recognition. Um, I know when I work with my clients, we work on building this awareness, on building mm. this like kind of, okay, how am I going to see, like, where's the next thing that I need support with? And when you start training your brain to, to look and go, okay, like, where am I holding myself back? Like, how am I thinking about this? These are all, it's like bringing this awareness to how you're operating so that you're not just on autopilot. You're actually looking for, okay, how can I excel? How can I, like, where are my areas that I can grow in here? Um, so there's that piece to it. And then once you've kind of honed in on, okay, like this thing, I want to work on this thing. I want you to sell yourself on an alternate way of thinking. So le- like, let's just go with the um, the public speaking example, because mm. I was once the kid in class who like would hide, like physically like shrink. <laughs> <laughs> like, do not call on me. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, everyone starts don't, there. Don't me do too. It. Just saying. Yeah. Just saying. We all start there, right? Yeah. Well, but not not all. Because I know some people mm. in my class were like, oh, that's fine. Like, even in mm. like elementary school and high school, they're like, oh yeah, sure, I'll talk in front of the crowd. That was yeah. not me. So <laughs> fast forward to now and after the work I've done, like with with how I want to grow and scale my business, like if you hand me a microphone, I am on it. Mm. I'm still gonna be terrified. Like, mm. let's just be clear. I'm still going to be terrified of like, we might mess up, but this is an amazing opportunity. I can go and help someone today. I can, you know, share what I've learned and my growth and, and go and impact more people by having that microphone and going. So what, like, once you've identified like what you're avoiding, what your trigger like is, then I want you to sell yourself on a different story. So for public speaking, like you had said, right? It's like that, like, I'm terrified. Oh my God, I might mess up. Like, uh, and this like overwhelming anxiety for a lot of people, right? Yeah. 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 Like we've been there. (laughs) I get it. Um, But like, I want you to look at like, what is another side to that story? Like another side to that story could be you get to share your message more Mm. people can benefit from this. Just even one person can take something that you say on stage and it can literally change their life. Mm. And when you start looking at it from a different perspective, it's kind of like, it's kind of like when you put a question in Google, if you give it a crappy question, you're going to get a crappy answer. Yeah. Right. And the better questions we ask, the better we direct our focus to what we want to create, this is how you build a mindset that's going to support mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. rather than like, oh, I can't do that. Or I don't know how, or I've sucked. Like I haven't done very well at this in the past. Okay. But you're capable of learning. You can practice and prepare. Um, you have a lot to say, right? Like these are all different ways that we can frame that, like going in public speaking mm-hmm. that is like new, it's like new data to your brain. Right. Like we want to input new things so that we can get a different response. Does that Mm -hmm. make sense? 
Yeah, it does. And actually, I want to I want to ask a similar but slightly different question because I was thinking, I th I thought public speaking, but actually we're here to talk about growing businesses. <laughs> I was like, well, yeah, I mean, you can grow your business through public sure, speaking. Sure, so sure, like, sure, hundred percent, hundred percent. So yeah, yeah I, I was gonna like say, okay, so what are some of the patterns that people are running that you've seen? that is resisting them, like some examples of that resistance that they mm, feel yeah. when they're going to that next six, seven, eight, nine figure, you know, what are some of the patterns that they're, they're running? And, and yeah. so maybe people watching this can sort of recognize that like, oh, that's me. I'm, I, that's similar to me. I'm, I'm running that pattern, you know, mm -hmm. again, it's easier to see other people than it is to see yourself. So what, always, are, what are some always. of the patterns that you know, you see with people wanting to scale their businesses? Yeah. So, um, some of the top ones that come to mind for me is building and growing your team. This is a big one as you go to scale, because you want to be taking yourself out of a lot of the data th things and really hone in on, okay, what are the key parts as you go mm -hmm. and scale that business really needs you for and not just mm -hmm. someone doing that task. So, um, this idea of like how you view your team, how you view them supporting you. Um, and also just this idea of letting go of some of that control. I know I see it in so many business owners of like, but I want it to be perfect, but I want it to work. Yeah, exactly. It's like, like mama yeah. bear energy, like don't, don't mess this up. <laughs> right. But, yeah. but in order to, to build a team so that you're able to grow and scale, you need to be able to let go of things and trust mm. that other people can like take care of your baby to mm. the same level of like love and care and appreciation. Yeah. Yeah. And so often I see that people are like, oh, but they won't do it as well as me. Like, what yeah. if they could do it better? Like, mm -hmm. let's just sit on that for a second. Because <laughs> mm. like, if somebody said, okay, I'm going to take over all of your, um, Accounting back end numbers. I mean, like I have outsourced most of that, but you know, if somebody told me that I'd be like, yes, please. Thank mm. you. I could do it myself. Don't want to. <laughs> yeah. And actually there's a really good, I, I, I was in a, a rich chef Ron, um, coaching group years ago. And one of the good ways to think about that I, I learned back then is like, and you're talking about questions and what goes through your head. And instead of, thinking how do I do this instead of asking that question actually asking how can I get this done and Ooh, the yeah. is very small but actually you're like how do I get this you know because everyone gets overwhelmed no matter what size your business is yeah. um, but how do I get this done and you and like you say you have to get over the I mean, I think for some people me included you have to get over the perfectionism of yourself yeah. And then yeah. you, you know that whole thing about, I, I always have that thing, like what's running through my head because I've had to shift a lot of this is like, good is good enough. Good is good enough. Mm, you, know, yes. you don't have to. And actually once you sh look at your, your, your day or your week or your month and you're like, instead of thinking, how do I do this? You're thinking, how do I get this done? Who can mm. get this done for me? You start, and once it's funny, isn't it? Once you get in the habit of it, you start yeah. like I think I was like, oh, freedom, time back. You know, you start shifting it all. Yeah, I don't want to do any of yes. it. I want to do the yeah. yeah. I, it's so it's that, so but. cool, like how those tiny little shifts make mm -hmm. such a world of difference. But you're framing it from a perspective of like, I can do it. I will do it, and like yeah. let's get it done. Versus like I don't know how to. I don't know what to do, right? No, no. Uh, but back to your your um, your question from before, you had said, like, what are some of the biggest things to go and scale? So building your team and being able to let go and like let go of that perfectionism is a big mm -hmm. one that I see. Uh, but another piece that um, I find really can drive up the pressure and the overwhelm in your business if you don't have a handle on it is your boundaries, especially mm -hmm. as a business owner who's scaling if you're still kind of, um, I want to say like loose with your boundaries and maybe um, answering questions late at night or, you know, waking up first thing in the morning and like doing work, not letting your team do work for you. 
um, things like getting too um, in the weeds with your clients. Like these are all areas and opportunities that you can kind of clean up those boundaries and yeah. it's going to buy you back time, but more so and more importantly is it's going to give you back your sanity <laughs> hmm. because when you're like, oh, I have to do everything for everyone and you have to be on all the time, then this drives up the pressure. It drives up the overwhelm and you're not operating at your best when that's mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. So like to go and clean up your boundaries, I, I did a whole mini course on this because I kept seeing it come up for my clients. Um, so if that's something that anyone listening is interested in, please message me. I will shoot you over the link for that. It is amazing. And mm -hmm. it really runs through like all the different areas in which you can go and clean up your boundaries so that you can essentially protect yourself because you're the biggest asset in your business. And when you're spreading yourself really thin, nothing good will come of that. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like parenting. If you're just like barely hanging on by a thread, then eventually you're going to snap. Mm. You're gonna snap at somebody, something like, and you're just not, you're not bringing your best to the table. That's not how you want your people, whether that's your team, your family, whatever, your clients to be seeing you. Mm. Yeah. My opinion, at least. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 yeah, I'm, you're talking to an obsessive, compulsive, addictive profile here. So I have to work <laughs> on <it> so hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, something yeah. I'm constantly. Um, it's okay. There's lots of room for growth. It's all good. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, I am, uh, yeah, it, it's been a lifelong journey of obsessive behavior that I have shown. But you're right. And, and, and I think those boundaries are super important. And also, I mean, one of the things of, again, it's like, what is, what do you need to be doing in the business that's going to, you know, flip the switches and what is going to be, you know, what is going to have the, 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 the leverage effect and not getting sort of down doing everything or, or even sort of, I, I, you know, I think one of the things I learned in, in business, and if I wish I'd learned it earlier, but hey ho, is yeah. actually, okay. um, time away like time out mm. has yes. almost become more profitable for me like mm -hmm. the time I can spend away from the business is almost more profitable than time in the you know or even working on the business because that's where you get the clarity and you know mm -hmm. you can start really planning and you know there's definitely you definitely need to work right but yeah, we're, we're not saying you're not working, but yeah, yeah we're talking yeah, yeah, to the, yeah. the workaholics here who like <laughs> have trouble getting out of the business. I understand yes, absolutely what me. you mean. Me. <laughs> I'd work seven days if I could get away with it, but, um, oh, right. but, but that is just me. So, um, so yeah, there is definitely boundaries and teams and, you know, there's a whole thing about hiring teams and people to do things and all of that stuff as well. Um, but I think once you can get those systems, I mean, talking about systems, really, and having the mindset to support those systems in place, mm -hmm. that's where you get the, the leverage. And, you know, I would add to that things like offers and, you yeah. know, scaling businesses that way and how you deliver things for people. You can get scale there and you can offer higher priced offers you can you know what I mean so there are lots of different elements of how you scale your business but the commonality of it all is it's you <laughs> it's you and I like what it you starts said. with you yeah yeah and I quite I like what you said at the beginning about um just being around the right people I I think that's so that's almost like more important than anything you're ever going to learn mm -hmm. yeah or, you know what I mean it's Which like, is funny because it's easy. Like yeah. to a degree, it's easy because if if you're hanging out with people that just love to, I don't know, drink, smoke, and watch TV, hmm. like okay. Even, and and again, I talk from my own experience, but even not wanting to be the smartest person in the room and going into mm -hmm. into environments where you're really challenged and you're yeah. having to show up in those groups where maybe other people are doing much better than you, but that's where you grow because they're going to take you, you know, they're going to take you with them. And it's interesting how, again, it's mindset, isn't it? How different mm -hmm. people pick different rooms depending on how much 
they want to get out of their comfort zone, how much they want to be the smartest person in the room, how much, you know what I mean? So all these decisions that you're making, I guess, are impacting how quickly you can scale your business. And actually, as I said, like with offers, like high ticket offers and building bigger, you know, really comes down to conviction, right? Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, yes, there are ways to design them. Yes, there are ways, you know, there's lots of ways to pack value in offers and, blah, 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 and all of that stuff, the frameworks and all of that stuff. But actually, it really does come down to your conviction because if you believe in the fact that, um, I, I believe wholeheartedly in the fact that the more people can invest in, the, in our services, the more value that they're going to get for lots of reasons. Yes. So, the, the, the more conviction I can have in the offers that we, we have in our business, the more help I can give other people. And yeah. it's funny when I work with people, you know, I work with lots of people in different stages of their business. Uh, again, it's like, can you stand in front of someone else and say, hey, this is awesome. And by the way, it's 50,000 or whatever it is, yeah. right? Um, and again, that, like, without that, pe- the, without that conviction, you could have the best offer in the world. That. Yeah. No one's going to buy it because they're really? looking at you and can like read oh, the, right. your hesitation. You're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even if you say all the perfect no, words, get it covering it up. You know, I always think that there are people and I think you have to being around the sort of influence and communication and all that kind of world. And I can always pick it up in people. I'm always looking for it subconsciously, I guess we all are. But it you can't cover it up. You can't cover it up because it just doesn't quite come across with that conviction. So having, again, it comes down to you and having the right strategies and beliefs and decisions and feelings and all of those things to get get your business to the next level it's fascinating it fascinates me how different how do people some people can break through and some people struggle all the time I'm interested to hear your thoughts on what those you know differences are so I find that the people who stay in the struggle Mm. aren't willing to do the hard things and Mm -hmm. and i mean i know i've been there so i can i can really relate to that but when we when we sit in that struggle it is a way to keep ourselves small and keep ourselves safe right Mm -hmm. so it's it's like the your your subconscious sitting there going well if this continues to be hard then like we just don't have to progress and move forward versus Mm -hmm. the person who's like, okay, this is hard. I don't know what to do, but I'm going to figure it out. And it's going to be uncomfortable. It's almost this, um, this willingness to feel discomfort. Mm -hmm. Like, are you willing to feel the discomfort of somebody saying no? Are you willing to feel the discomfort of messing up if you do a public speaking gig and, (laughs) you know, mess up on your words, say the wrong thing, whatever. Yeah. Um, and it's the, so yeah, it, like if I were to boil it down to one say it, one thing, I would say it's the willingness to feel discomfort because mm-hmm. if you're sitting there feeling stuck and like not feeling like you're getting anywhere, how could you be playing safe? Mm-hmm. Like, and it might be a really uncomfortable question. You might be like, no, mm-hmm. I'm not doing that. But mm-hmm. just uh, like entertain the idea of like, could I? just be keeping myself safe here could I just be playing small and what would need to change or like what discomfort can I go and seek out today of mm-hmm. like making an offer making a connection um you know putting yourself out there sharing your your voice your thoughts like those are all things that can lead to a lot of discomfort if mm. there's comments feedback yeah. Somebody being like, oh my God, that's too expensive. I'm like, all right, it's not for you. It's okay. Yeah. It's it's interesting, isn't it? It's something that I don't know whether I've just been consuming it and I've I've, I've been focused on it personally for years because I'm just interested in it. But it is it, it it 
the irony is, and there's a lovely quote by Joseph Campbell, I think, about the 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 treasure that you seek is in the oh, I can't remember now. The treasure that you seek is in the cave of fear, or something like that. The fear that it's something about if you get through your fear, mm, yes, you it's get on the other side of fear. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a lovely quote by Joseph Campbell, but I balls it up, but I will find it and put it in the comments. <laughs> Um, but it is, it's like, can we, and, and the thing is, it's like, it's that, that the willingness to get through that discomfort. And I guess the, the faith in the fact that you are going to get through it. That you will then, get to the other side yeah. of the discomfort. Yeah. But Cause there is always another yeah. side. Hello. Right. Yeah. 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 It's, it's an interest, it, I mean, there are patterns across the whole human race, and I'm talking about the sort of first world, Western world human race. And I think there's very few people, that's why I love entrepreneurs, I love working with entrepreneurs and coaches because they're the brave ones, right? They're the ones with courage who've gone, I'm or gonna totally give it a go. Huh? <laughs> totally or, crazy and delusional. <laughs> Or taking crazy and delusional, which you know maybe it's a combination of the two, but probably, that, uh, probably somewhere in the middle there. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's called passion, isn't it? Officially, but I don't, I'll, I'll take that. I'll mind. take that. Yeah. <laughs> um, interesting. I'd love. I mean, we could talk for hours about this. I could talk for hours about this. Um, I always like to ask people who I, I have on this on these lives, like just because it's like offers, and I always like to talk about offers. Like, what is your like? What's the best thing? What's the best thing you've ever bought, or the best offer you've invested in? Or tell. Me, I was thinking that today. I wonder what she's going to say. Oh, good one. Um, let's see. I think it'd be a toss up between investing in. Um, a one-on-one -on -one coach or investing in a group. I personally love both of those dynamics. Mm -hmm. And I feel like for me, it kind of depended on the support that I needed in that moment. Mm -hmm. um, but like, I, I absolutely love, and I'm a fan of both containers, I guess, just depending mm -hmm. on what you, what you need. But I'd have to say one of those two things. Cause like I've bought the, the business structure stuff and I've bought the, the like, all kinds of different things related to business, but really the thing that stretched me the most, the thing that was like the most anxiety producing was actually going and investing money into myself mm. without having a guaranteed return at the end. Mm. Like, and so like needing to show up, needing to not just show up like for myself, for my investment, for what I'm building, that was like by far the best and also ter most terrifying thing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even now when I invest, I'm like, okay, we're doing this. <laughs> I actually think it's a good uh, exercise to think about when 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 you're when you're creating offers is that you're thinking about what are people feeling as they're thinking mm -hmm. about investing, you know? And I think you're right. It's 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 so obvious, but it's not in the the offers that you're going to get the most from is almost it's almost and I mean I I could I don't know if I should say this but the the offer is almost the 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 change in you is actually in that transaction you making that yes. commitment you Absolutely. go Absolutely. You no know, there's nothing guaranteed in life right there's nothing guaranteed in life really really when it comes down to it and it is about you showing up and taking the action you need to and that 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 kind of change is triggered by your you having the courage. I would say it was courage in some mm -hmm. in the in in sort of certainly in higher ticket stuff is having the courage to go. I am going to do this. I'm going to do this, and I'm willing to invest in this offer because that's what I want to go for. And when you think about that from mm -hmm your your customer's perspective and kind of get in tune with that is it's actually it changes the way you communicate I think about it because you're much more sensitive to that and sometimes when you invest in stuff and you talk about group coaching and 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 you know sometimes I've, I've invested in group coaching I spent like a week going oh, 
oh, should yeah. I do it? Should I, and then I do it. I'm just like, oh, it's like a relief kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. And sometimes you look like there are offers and you're running for the credit card up the hallway. And yeah. Like, like, where is it? Where to put it? <laughs> and you feel that. Kind of, and then sometimes you, you know, I had this whole mixture of emotions. And I think if you, like you say, if you can tune into some of that, that is some of the beauty in it and some of the, yeah. Yeah. It's kind absolutely. of going, isn't it? in a way, in, yeah. in that kind of, and, and, and then it's like scale your business. It's uh, I, so I suppose the, the, the sort of the, the, the summary of what you're saying is get your mindset right and get your and, and keep keep looking for discomfort. And that is how you scale your yeah. business, because you'll always get strategies to blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Whatever you need. Yeah. You can always plug and play with different strategies, but it's yeah. really that like. Okay, where is the discomfort? Where is my growth here? Yeah, yeah. that's a good question. So yeah. awesome. What a lovely question to end on. But I've got one more, which is, you know, how do people, <laughs> how do people <laughs> find out more about you? Where do they go to find out more about you? Yes. Okay. Well, I hang out on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, you can find me at uh, Karina Groombridge Coaching. That's my handle on both platforms. Um, or if you message I mean, you can email me, Google me. I'm like in all the places. Yeah. <laughs> but for the most part, Facebook, Instagram. Exactly. Yeah. You'll find me online. <laughs> I'm and I would love to connect with you and like hear more about what you're up to and what you're doing. Because honestly, like I'm here for your growth. That is literally mm -hmm. why I do what I do. It makes me so happy to see not only my clients, but like the people in my, um, in my, uh, just orbit like the people who are in my audience whether they buy stuff from me or not still message me and they're like oh my god you said this thing and it's helped me do, do this so mm. i'm here for it all <laughs> mm. <laughs> whether and you actually, pay me a dime or not i don't care but yeah, like come and, hang out i want to help you grow your business yeah and actually you're calling out to a very specific um person which i love is the the you know, which isn't everyone for sure, but it's it's businesses who are uh, are like slogging, you know, doing doing that. I mean, I, I remember in in business coaching business I had. I'm like, I can't do another. You know, like you're exhausted by one o'clock. You've done coaching sessions and things like that. Mm -hmm. So actually, the, those businesses that are looking to be able to scale in a way. That gives them their time back, right? That's that's yeah. who you're helping. Yes, absolutely. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much for coming on, and I really look forward to finding out all the things you're doing uh, in more detail. But thank you, and um, see you really soon. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, everyone, for listening. <laughs>